Today's video is going to be a little bit different from usual. We're going to be doing a puzzle rush survival. So it's chess puzzles, obviously, of increasing difficulty. If I get it wrong three times, then it's over. I'm sure many of you will be aware of this format anyway. And obviously, I just want to see how high I can get and talk you through my thought process while we do it. So it's kind of similar to the way that I do my other videos, my rapid games, etc. Except there's actually no time limit. So I have got a bit more um, leeway with going over the top a little bit to explain so that hopefully you guys can understand where I'm coming from a bit easier. I hope this can potentially be a commonplace type of video for the channel. If you guys enjoy it, please let me know. And for those of you new to the channel, my name is Alex. I'm rated around, I'm rated just under 2000 ELO over the board classical chess. So it'll be interesting to see as a 2000 rated player, how far I can go in this. Without further ado, let's get into it. Puzzle one, let's go. No time limit, remember. So we're not constrained by time. Okay, so my opponent hangs a rook. Like, I assume I just take the rook, and then, what, well, I'm up in exchange after everything. So, there's, obviously I considered, um, I considered the move bishop to g6 check, just in case, because, you know, on your list of things that you want to look out for when you're looking for tactics, or just a move to play in general, is um, checks, captures, and attacks. So my first thought was bishop to g6 check, but the king can just move or even block with the rook, and the rook is just straight up hanging, so I might as well just take it. I know there's no real point going so in depth on the puzzle, but I thought, you know, just in case you were thinking bishop g6 check. Here I assume I just take the bishop, discards the f2 pawn as well. There's nothing better in the position. This is just a back rank mate, because the rook can block on e8, and the queen can block on b8, but neither of those squares is defended twice, and the king obviously has no escape. Obviously, these are easy, but um, okay, this is just another back rank mate, because the opponent blocks the um, way out for the king. Back rank mate is very common in a lot of puzzles, I swear. Again, this is another back rank mate because the king can't access f7 as it's controlled by my king. The rook controls d8, the bishop controls e8, but neither square is controlled twice. So I can just give the, well, bishop e8 and then mate. Okay, here, knight d5, and you may be tempted to take this back, but remember, checks, captures, attacks. That's the order you ought to solve puzzles in. And I've seen in the chess Discord server, by the way, link below, um, if you want to join that, in the puzzles channel, uh, Jiten does a great job of explaining this kind of thing when he's solving puzzles that people are posting in there and explaining how he got to the um, conclusion that he did. And quite simply, checks, captures, attacks is a great way to go about it. Yeah, the knight's hanging, but we also have a check on h7, and wouldn't you know, but that is also checkmate. So that's obviously better than taking a knight. Okay, I believe this is just another back rank mate, because the bishop controls b1, the rook controls e1, the queen, the queen controls f1 and d1, but remember, none of these squares are controlled twice, so this should be a simple back rank mate. Okay, bishop to b4. Again, attacks, you could take the bishop, but checks come first in what when we're trying to look for candidate moves. So queen to d2 is actually just checkmate. So we'll do that instead. Okay, again, just a checkmate on c7, helped on by the knight. I don't think I need to go too much in depth. Here's just a simple checkmate on g2, because the bishop and the queen are lined up. These will get harder, but I'm not in any rush. Okay, king h8. Remember, we're looking for checks first. There's nothing useful we can capture anyway apart from the a7 pawn, but um, we've got a lot of problems with black's pawns anyway, so we don't want to be doing that. And we have some checks on the black king, but the best one is queen to f8, because then we cover the g7 square, and it's checkmate. All right. Knight g5, 
Uh, I think knight f4 is checkmate because the king is cut off like this. So all we need to do is attack this square. We already have d5 covered. So knight to f4 fulfills that and f7 is defended by the pawn. So that's mate. Okay, this is obviously tempting to take the rook, but um, queen e7 is checkmate supported by the rook because the king can't access the g8 square. Remember, it's checks, captures, then attacks. All right, this is a classic back rank mating pattern. Queen c7 check forces the king to b8, and then queen c8, rook c8, rook c8 is checkmate, because we can't go to c8 immediately because the king and the rook control that square. So we need to go in like this, and the queen has no diagonal way to get back to help the king out. Okay, I'm hoping this is where things start to get a bit more tricky. Although this isn't particularly tricky, it should just be mate in two. Queen d5 check. The only square the king has, because um, the knight controls all of these squares and the pawn controls this square, the queen will control e5, so king to e7 will be the only move, and then queen f7 will be mate. Oh, it just gives us it immediately. Okay. Um... All right, so obviously the move that comes to mind immediately is queen to h7, and my opponent can play two different moves. And the reason this comes to mind immediately is because it's the only check in the position that doesn't lose a queen, right? Um, these checks don't work because all these squares are defended. So queen h7 check. All right, if king to f8, then we can give a check on h8. And if king to f7, then bishop to g6 is checkmate. All right, so what if queen to h7, and instead of going to f8, he goes to f7? Then again, bishop g6 check, king to f8, and queen to h8 is checkmate. So we calculate the line, and then we deliver the mate. This is a kind of cool one, actually. So in this position... Black is threatening to promote, uh, also threatening queen to g1, as the bishop is now helping out in the attack of that square. And remember, you need to look for checks first. What are the checks in this position? Well, rook f8 is the only check. You say, okay, bishop takes f8. Yeah, but then the queen can access f7, and the knight also controls f7. I'm literally just looking at the most forcing moves. I'm sure this is very obvious for a lot of you. But for some of you, it might not be. And once we deliver this check, the king is forced to h8, which means the bishop is no longer defended. And this knight cuts off the rook's defense. And it's a back rank mate. Okay, this is kind of an interesting position. So we're about to lose a knight and we're already down a rook. What can we do in this position? Knight to f5 isn't a move with check because we're pinned to the king. So what else can we do? We can check with rook d6, the king runs away, there's nothing in that position. We can play pawn g5 check. Okay, what can black do? He only has one move, which is king g6, which makes calculation very easily. Can we deliver another check? Yes, we can. f5 check. And the king cannot go back onto this file. We control the g5 square, and our knight controls the f5 square. Even though it's pinned, it still controls the square. And our pawns will be controlling every other square. Obviously, his pawn takes up the h5 square, so that will be checkmate. Again, I'm just looking for checks. All right. Most obvious move is queen to h2 check, because it's a check. The king has to go to g4. Do we have a knockout blow? Yeah, we have queen to g3. And alongside the pawn helping out to guard f5 and h5, we cut off every other square for the king. And the computer gives it to us without making us prove it. Okay, rolling through these. <clears throat> so, again, looking for checks, captures, attacks. What checks do we have? We have queen a7. We have queen b7 as the checks that don't lose material. Queen a7, the king can go to c8. King Queen b7, though, the e-file is closed off. d6 and d8 are unavailable to the king and the king can't access c8 because our queen controls it so that's checkmate okay king h2 so rook h8 is obviously a move but then the king goes back to g2 and i don't see another way to deliver a check 
So queen f2 is the other viable check in this position. The king has two moves. He can go to h1 or h3. And in both of those situations, we can play rook to h8 then. And if rook h8, bishop h5, rook h5, king g4, we might, hmm, well, I mean, rook h8 is obviously the move, right? And we obviously take, there's, there's got to be a checkmate there. Um, I don't know why I'm struggling to see this so much, actually. Um, takes there, 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 bishop there, takes, king g4. Do we have rook h4? If takes, check, king f5, queen f4 is mate, because our king controls these squares. If king g4, rook h4, king f5. How do we deliver a check? Because here no longer works, because our queen doesn't control this square. Okay, well, if I'm missing something obvious, then please let me know. The move might be... Um, queen h2, threatening queen h3 mate. And if rook to h1 is played to stop that mate, then rook h4, king f4, Rook f4 takes, queen takes his mate. Um, king g4, queen h2, rook h1, rook h4, pawn takes. Check. The king can go back to h3 though. Huh. Where's the mate? <laughs> I'm actually going to have to check this in some analysis real quick. I don't know why this is... um so difficult for me right now. Queen f2, king h3, check there, check there. Oh, we do have rook h4. Oh, and we can just take on g3, I guess. We don't need to deliver a check. And he has no way of stopping several different mates. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Sorry, I, I had a bit of a brain fog moment there because it wasn't a forcing move, I suppose. But anyway, anyway, that's done. We'll move on to the next one. Number 21. Queen to a2. I think queen d6 makes sense. Well, obviously you look at back rank first, but after the trade, the uh, king goes to c7. So in my head, I want to go queen d6, king a8, and then deliver a typical back rank mate. But if queen d6 and the king goes to c8, then we can play rook c1 check, and the king is completely cut off of all of its legal moves by the queen, and there's no way to block apart from sacking a queen on c4. And if we go like this, then we just sort of a check like checkmate like that. Okay, cool. Here there is a fork between the king and the queen. I saw that quickly because it was just a very simple check to see in the position. Um, I don't think there's a mate here because the king has so many squares it can go to. A move like queen to b3, bishop d3. So if we count the material real quick, it's three minor pieces each, a rook each and a queen each. So it should just be winning the queen. And here, obviously, don't go king to f8 because then my opponent can play pawn h8 promotion to queen. So king h8 blocks the pawn from promoting. Okay, rook h2. So we're cutting the king off here. If we deliver a check on e8, then the king goes to f7. Rook f8 check, king goes to e6. We take the bishop. 
rook h1 check, king d2. Rook a1, rook takes a knight. But can we just mate him? If we play rook f6, the king has no legal moves apart from going to h8. And we're threatening rook f8 mate. The bishop blocks the, his rook from going to f2 and trying to stop that. Rook f6, he has two checks in the position. Rook h1. So after rook f6, rook h1, we can go king d2. If he tries to check us again, we can just drop back. If he checks us... Sorry, what am I on about? Rook f6, check here, check here, check. Like the rook going back to h2. Here. If the bishop gives a check, then king d2. And if he tries to check me again, then we take the bishop. And eventually we escape. If rook f6, rook e2... Bishop f1, the rook can go back to e8 and guard the f8 square. So we don't have a mate in this position. So it's probably easier just to deliver this check, win the bishop. If he gives us a back rank check, then we can play... Not queen... Sorry, king e2, because maybe he has a check probably king d2. If he checks us again, we can probably just run uh, over here. Or actually, we might be able to block with a rook. But I think this is the correct continuation Yeah, to win the bishop. Because you had to calculate whether rook f6 actually delivered mate or not, but it didn't. Okay, here, <clears throat> there are two checks in the position you want to consider. There is queen to f8 check, and after the only move, rook to e8, the attack seems to fizzle out because we can't access d7. The other check is queen to c8 check. The king has to take the queen, and then rook to a8 is back rank mate because we take up the d7 and b7 squares with the pawn, and his own pawn is blocking the c7 square as an escape route. So that's mate, okay. Bishop to d7, what do we notice from this move? You can notice that the knight is no longer protected by the queen because the bishop is blocking it. You'll also notice there's a pawn on f6, which looks very unnatural. So the move queen to h5 comes to mind, giving a check. The only move is g6 to block the check. And then we can take the knight, and after he takes our bishop, we can take the bishop with our queen. And if you just do a quick material count, we'll be up a piece. If you were to try and take this first and then deliver the check, the knight will be protected by the queen, so that's no good. So we do it in this order, and we take here. Okay, bishop to g5. The first move that comes to my mind is knight to e4, forking the bishop and the queen. I don't see how we attack the king in any way, because the king is fairly well guarded. So knight e4 is the move I want to play. Okay. Uh, his queen can't defend his bishop by any means because this diagonal is blocked off by the pawn and the pawn can't advance because our knight is on e4. You do have to check about the queen going to c3 or d4 to attack our undefended rook. But our queen controls both of those squares so we can take and then take and emerge up a piece. Knight e4, there is no checks to the king on this diagonal. Even if there was, we would have bishop d7 to block it and attack the queen. But the queen can't access any of these light squares, so knight to e5 should be winning. Okay, yeah, so if we take the bishop, he takes our rook, or he takes our queen, obviously. So we take here first, and then we take the bishop, and then merge up a piece. Okay, d4. What do we notice about this position? We've got an active queen. Okay, the queen would love to go to e1 and deliver checkmate, but the king controls that square. Our bishop's eyeing up g2, but I don't see how we add another attacker to that immediately. Unless we play like queen c6, but he can always block it. We need to look for checks, captures, attacks. Do we have any checks? Queen e1 doesn't work. Queen e2 doesn't work. Bishop a6, though. Bishop a6, the only legal move is to move the king, unless you block with c4 first and then I take it, and the king ends up on g1 regardless. 
And then queen to e1 will deliver a back rank checkmate. But yeah, c4, you take and then deliver mate. Hey, getting a little bit harder. Queen d3. What do we notice? Our queen's putting significant pressure on him. Okay, the knight is defended. The knight's defending h2. Our opponent has no immediate threats. Uh, what's the material count? Well, the material count, we are down a piece. Rook h6 is a move that I'm considering because the queen, ca sorry, the king can't escape and queen h1 will be mate. The f pawn also can't move to give the king the f2 square to run to. So rook h6, I don't see what white does to stop queen to h1 mate because queen to e4 doesn't guard the square as the knight is in the way. Knight h4. What if we take? If we take and pawn takes, the queen hangs. So the tactics work out in our favour. Now the queen gets to go to f3 to guard h1. Queen h2, king f1. Do we have anything there? Yeah, we can play queen h1 check, queen takes, rook takes, king moves, and then we can take the rook and we emerge up a rook. Remember, attacks don't need to end in checkmate, and we have no back rank problems because our rook defends the back rank. So we can go and win a rook. Okay, this is um, a very typical attacking sort of idea with the bishop on this long diagonal, the other bishop cutting through, the queen hanging out around the king. What do we look for first? We look for checks. Bishop f7. King f7, does that do anything? No, g6 is defended. So that was the first move I considered. The first move I considered was bishop 2 f7 check, king f7, and I was like, oh, g6 isn't defended, but then wait. Wait. This pawn is pinned to the king. My eyes are drawn towards the bishop's pin because I considered bishop f7 because it was a check. That makes me realize this pawn is actually not defending g6, so I can just take g6. And after king h8, queen to g7 is checkmate. Okay, rolling through these. All right, what do we notice in this position? Do we have any checks? Well, the knight and the king, you can see by their geometry, there is one diagonal square between them, which means the knight takes four moves to access the square the king is on. That's just how chess works geometrically. If this knight wanted to access this square, we'd have to play like knight d2, knight b3, knight d4, knight c6. That's way too many moves, obviously. So we have no checks. Captures. Well, we can take the knight. Okay, what happens if we take the knight? King takes. Then, do we have anything? Checks, captures, attacks. Well, we have a check on f6. Forking the king and the rook. You'll notice the fact that all of these pieces are on light squares is very dangerous for my opponent because with my knight being on a light square, once it hops to a dark square, it will be attacking a lot of light squares. And in this case, the tactics work out because it is a puzzle. After bishop to d5, you do have to consider the move rook g8, sorry, rook d5. What do I mean, bishop? You have to consider the moves rook, rook g8 check because if we move the king and he takes, we do actually still have this fork, although here the knight would be pinned. But a simpler way after rook d5, rook g8, is we can play rook g5, getting our rook out of the attack of the king and offering a trade and just taking a full knight. If rook d5, rook e4 though, if we take then our rook is defended by our pawn so that desperado doesn't actually work so we're going to take deliver the check and take here you have to check these uh, variations where your opponent can throw in a check or throw in a capture to like you know change the situation okay here this is a tactic very similar to the one that we just did with the bishop pinning this f pawn it means that g3 is not defended and you can't take with the rook because our rook is pinned to our king so the only move is queen to g3 check and then 
white only has two moves, king h1, queen g2, mate. If queen g3, king f1, then queen to g1 is mate because the e2 square is filled by the rook. Okay. G3. G3, all right. Interesting position. You'll notice that if this rook moves, then this rook will be hanging. That's potentially useful. We also have eyes on the weak h7 square. We also have doubled rooks on the b file, right? So checks captures attacks. Do we have any useful checks? Well, we can play queen g4 check, but rook g6 and we have no follow up. Okay, I like the look of rook b7 check though. Okay, if rook g if rook b7 and uh, the king just moves, then we'll be able to take on h7. If rook b7 and the king goes to f8, then it's a bit trickier. Can we just take on h7? I don't know. I don't know whether that works. Our bishop's stuck behind pawns, so our bishop isn't going to be doing anything anytime soon. Is there a way to exploit the fact that this rook, if it moves, will be exposing this rook? I don't think so, because our bishop can't get into the game. Our queen, like I said, can only really go here, but that doesn't do anything. So rook b7 looks like the only viable move to me. Also, rook b8 is controlled twice, so we can't do that. So rook b7, bishop b7, rook b7. If king f8, the thing is, if he goes to either of these squares, then I'm going to take here, right? And then I'm going to deliver a mate. So rook b7, bishop b7, rook b7, king f8. Maybe we can just take on h7 anyway and threaten back rank mate. Because if this rook moves to any other file, then rook, I think queen f7 will be mate. I'm sure this is winning, so I'm going to play it. Okay, cool. And yeah, like I said, if the rook moves, then this rook is exposed. So we should just be able to take, take, and take. We're considering tactics like this, but I don't think they work. If here, 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 then he can just play queen g7 blocking. So we're going to take, and then we should just take the rook and be up a bishop. Okay. I so if you take this rook, king takes, and you play like a check, the king has way too many escape squares. Queens are obviously a powerful attacking pieces, but they need support to be effective most of the time. So if we play a move like queen c8, rook f8, and we can't try some sacrifice on g7 because it doesn't work. The move I would like to play is queen to e6, pinning the rook. But then he takes on f2 and we're getting mated. So, what other checks do we have? Well, we have rook b8 check. Our opponent's only move is rook to f8. If we take the rook, like I said, our queen is ineffective by herself. But we do have the move of queen to e6 check in that position, forcing the king to h8, and then we can take the rook. Like this. And it's just back rank mate with extra steps. Okay, first thing I notice about this position, the king is cut off on both sides. So we could deliver a, back, um, a mate, potentially, because the king doesn't have much room. If we take this bishop, are we threatening anything? Well, we're up a piece if we take the bishop. Queen h1. Oh, sorry. What am I on about? F2 is mate. So our opponent is threatening to mate us in one. Which is no bueno. The move bishop to h5 is worth considering. But then the king can just go back to d7. And that would be a repetition. So obviously we're looking to win, right? Another check is queen to c6. 
if my opponent goes rook d7, then queen d7 is mate. So queen c6, we might be able to play on the light squares because of the strength of our bishop. If the king goes to f7, then queen e6 is mate because the dark squares are taken up by the rook and the pawn. If queen c6, queen e7, there, sorry, king e7, then queen to e6 is checkmate because these two squares are taken up by the rooks. And like I said, that was the first thing I noticed in the position is the king is kind of surrounded by its own pieces. So this is checkmate. Okay, we're 35 in, haven't made a mistake yet. Obviously I've got no time limit, I'm well aware. So I'm really taking my time with these, but I hope this is nice and instructional instructional I was going to say but it's instructive <laughs> um, I hope this is nice and instructive for you and that you guys are learning stuff as I'm doing this and if it is then I'd really appreciate if you're not subscribed already to subscribe and you know drop a like get involved in the comments um, I'm as of recording this video like four subscribers away from 2000 which is insane by the way <laughs> because this channel's only been going for a few months to be at 2000 subscribers almost already that's kind of mad. So thank you very much for the support. And uh, for those of you already subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. This is a cool puzzle. I like this. I was just looking at the puzzle as I was talking there. So it's almost back rank mate with rook to uh, a1 check, but the king has the a2 square. And then we run out of attacking options, right? You'll also notice that the h file and the g file are blocked off. The king is also running out of squares to run to that are not on the back rank. So what I'm thinking is, okay, rook a1, he has king h2 and the attack is over. Can I guard the h2 square? Well, I actually can. King h3 takes up the h2 square and rook to h8 check doesn't exist because his pawn is in the way. So he can't check me. He also can't check me on g3 because my pawn is in the way. So after king h3, if this king goes to either f1 or h1, this is still mate. If king h3 and he takes my pawn, this is mate. And if he takes with the other, if he takes the pawn with the rook or the pawn, rook a1 is still mate regardless. If king to h3, so the king moving doesn't work, taking the pawn doesn't work. What about if he moves the rook to try and block? That also doesn't work because the only square the rook can go to to block would be f1 because that's controlled by the king, but the rook can't get there. Because after rook f8, there's too many things in the way. So king h3, if a move like rook e1 is played, rook a1, I mean d1, c1, b1, e1 are all the same. All these squares are undefended, so it doesn't stop mate. King h3, rook e1, and you take the rook, whoops, with back rank mate, with extra steps. That's a kind of a running theme with these puzzles. Okay, b3. The first thing I notice is the weakness of this diagonal. That's just what I notice off the bat, but we can't exploit that. Our pieces are all over on the king side. Remember, this is the king side. This is the queen side, regardless of where the king and queen are. Sorry, regardless of where the kings are, the king starts on e8. So everything here is the king side and the queen starts on d8. So everything here is the queen side and same for the white pieces, obviously. Okay. So... Checks, captures, attacks. We have no... Well, we do have a check. We have rook f2 check. Obviously, it's a capture as well. Or we have queen to f2 check. If queen f2, rook f2, obviously, we're just sacrificing a queen. So what about if we play this? Well, then he just takes with the rook. Or he takes with the queen. f3 is well defended. And we're just trading down. So that doesn't work. What else do we notice about the position? Well, this rook is pinned to the king. Okay. So what is this rook not doing? This rook is not defending f3. Okay, so what if we take f3? Well, if we take f3 and queen f3 and queen f3, the rook can't recapture because it's pinned to the king. So the rook would have to take my rook. Then I would take his rook and it would be a queen versus a rook, which is winning. Okay, what about rook f3 and he takes my rook? Well, then I can just take his queen. Okay, so what about if rook f3 and the queen moves to e2? Well, then we have three attackers on the rook, and he has two defenders. So if rook f3, queen e2, or queen e1, doesn't really matter, uh, then we just take the rook, and rook takes 
rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, we're up a queen. So if he goes something like rook f3, queen e2, rook f2, rook f2, rook f2, let's imagine he puts the queen on e1 so that he's not pinned to the king. Then we just up a rook. So yeah, he goes for this line. Obviously don't take this rook, because if he takes with either piece, the queen is defended. Here the queen isn't defended, and we emerge up a queen for a rook. Okay, number 37. We're getting closer to 2,000, which is my, like, actual rating. So it'll be interesting to see how much higher we can go. Alright, so first off, checks, captures, attacks. Do we have any checks? Absolutely not. The king is way too well defended. Okay, what about captures? So captures, we can take this knight. Okay, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. We have nothing. Knight takes, rook takes, b4. Well, then he can take on c1, and if we take the queen, he takes our queen, so that's equal material. Okay, what if we mix up the move order? Rook c5. Well, if rook c5, rook c5, and then we go b4, unlike the previous variation, where if we go b4 straight away, our opponent can take on a4, right? And it's going to be equal material. Whereas if we throw this capture in first, because it's, it's actually a very common thing where rooks, bishops, and knights move differently. So if you can perform an exchange sacrifice or take with a different type of piece, you can often avoid trades. I'm struggling how to articulate it, but I hope you know what I mean. Like we're getting rid of the same piece type to make it difficult to black, for black to just trade off. If you get what I'm saying. Because if we take with the knight and then rook takes and b4, it's the same piece type, so he can just take. Whereas if I take with the rook and then he takes with the rook, rook and knight are different piece types, so they don't move the same. So I'm attacking him, but he can't attack me, and he, there's no rook on c1 for him to attack. So rook c1, if he takes with a queen, then we obviously just take the queen. Uh, so, sorry, rook c5, rook c5, b4. Does he have anything else? I don't think so. This bishop isn't looking at anything. I was I was um considering moves like bishop to d2, but the knight hangs in all of those lines. So I'm pretty sure this works. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So what do I notice about this position? The king is weak on the dark squares. Okay. So can our queen access a square like f6? No. Again, checks, captures, attacks. Queen h7 is the only check. Well, we also have rook g6, actually. If rook g6, hg6, queen h8, that is mate. But if rook g6, the king, if he goes to f8, we can give this check. But he can take with the f pawn, and then our attack is gone. So other checks, queen h7 check. If the king moves to f8, then this is mate. So he has to take. Then we can deliver a check on h2. Again, the king can't access g7, so the king has to go back here. There's no piece black can use to block my rook's attack. And then rook to h8. Or if the king goes to... Oh, we can't go to f8, sorry, he's on h7. Then rook h8 will be mate. This is also a common pattern, which makes it easier for me to see. But you can also look at it through the lens of just checks, captures, attacks. Okay, bishop delivers a check on g4 so we have to respond to the check how can you respond to checks well you can take the attacking piece you can move the king or you can block the check if we take the attacking piece then queen takes and we're down a queen because otherwise uh, material is currently equal okay what about f3 because f2 is under consider bleh, considerable attack as well what about f3 well, if we go f3, then the bishop is under attack and the queen is under attack. So that just looks like a simple double attack. Rook takes. I think we can just take the queen. If um, bishop takes here, then we can just take with the bishop. Rook takes. We could just take with the bishop, though, because f2 is well defended. But is it simpler to do this? Well, then he can deliver this discovered check, actually. So that's kind of scary. I think bishop takes works. 
If bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, there's no useful checks for my opponent. And a move like rook f8 trying to access f2 doesn't work because we can just take, take, and take the queen. There we go. Okay, cool. We're up to 2143. How high can we go? 50 would be pretty cool. Okay, queen e7. Like I say, I know there's no time limit. I'm well aware. Would I be able to do this with a time limit? No, not to disaccuracy. Okay. First off, obviously, we're noticing the attack on f7. Also noticing the fact that it is currently equal material. There's been no pieces traded whatsoever. If we go bishop f7, king d8, mm, I don't see how we continue anything. Okay, what about knight f7? The rook is under attack. He can't save the rook. I don't I don't actually understand. Isn't is there not more to it? We just trade. I have no idea how that's a 2160 puzzle. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay. This is a bit more interesting. First we need to orientate ourselves. We're playing white. Our pawn is on the sixth rank, so it's two squares away from promotion. Here, our king cannot go to the e-file. It has to vacate the d-file, so it has to step onto one of these squares. The most natural looking square to me is c6. If the rook then tries to stop the pawn by going to e1, then king d7 looks like it works. Yeah, if we go... King c6 and something like king e5 is played trying to chase the pawn, then we can just push. And he can't stop it with a move like rook d8, because our pawn controls that square. If he tries to give a check, then we just move the king, and if he gives a check, we just move the king. The, his king can't keep up with our pawn. This check. We go to b7 and then rook to e6. What if we go to c5? Then he just gives us another check. He can't access d7 because his rook controls it. b7 looks like the only square. Okay, rook e6. This is a complicated rook end game. Um. Can we just play this, and then this, and then this? Because he's not threatening to take the pawn. If king c8, king d6, king d8, we are threatening to promote. And I don't see how he stops it, because this pawn is defended twice. If king c8, king f6, king d8, and he gives a check... Then we can just block it. No, I d I wanted to play king c8. Oh my god, I literally wanted to play king c8. <laughs> Dude. Ugh. God sake. I know that was winning. I mean, let's just check it real quick, but I know that was winning. Why did I do that? I just misclicked. Yeah, let me just do it again. That's winning. <sighs> what? Why did I do that? Okay, whatever. Let's keep going. Let's see how far we can take this. Very frustrating. Just to just to mouse slip it. Um. Okay. This check doesn't do anything. What about if we push this? Okay. What's our threat? E two here then we can deliver a check and promote this should be the only move okay uh if we go here here if we go like this then the king covers everything so here here we can't go here because the rook controls this square do we play c4 trying to boot the rook away the rook can go to a3 
He delivered his check. He goes here. How do we continue? Here, here. I'm considering here, but then we remove this square for our cell. C4, rook a3, c3, trying to cut the rook's connection. Even if we get e2, king here. How do we actually do anything? This is difficult. E2 check. Looks like a must play move. But if we go E2 check first, and then we go pawn C4, then the rook can take on F3. C4 looks natural. After this, Oh, maybe the idea is to go bishop c5 attacking the rook. Because then the threat is e2, king, e1, bishop, b4 check. I think this is the right way to go about it. Okay, he just gives the rook up. I just want to go into the analysis because I think that was the idea. I just want to check it. If it Ever loads. Okay, cool. Analysis board. That was a nice puzzle. I like that. So, king f1, f3, rook here, c4. And if he goes here, best move is king a5. So, I did see this idea of king a5 and king b4 trying to kick the rook out. Oh, this doesn't work because of this? Oh no, it does work. Surely. Because if this, e2 here, and we go bishop b4. And if the rook goes back, then... What, we just continue pushing? Because this, this... It doesn't quite work. Because the rook's helping in the defense. We find the right idea anyway to preserve an advantage with c4 because that's the only move. So I guess the computer is basically saying, look, there's a bunch of ways to win this after you play c4, but c4 is the move you need to find. Okay, makes sense. I guess that happens more at the higher level puzzles. Okay, well our queen is basically trapped, but his queen is also under attack. What happens if we take his queen? Here, here, we're just down a ton of material. So if we take his rook first as a desperado, because we're going to lose our queen anyway. If he saves his queen, then we're going to have a bunch of attacking opportunities. So here, 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 we end up up an exchange. Can we take this? And then he gives a check. So king h1 is probably better. And the bishop's pinned anyway. Cool. Um, take. He can't take with the queen. So pawn takes. Then we just take the knight. Oh my god. What? What did I miss? Okay, I, I played that too quickly probably. After this? Oh, then he can go queen d6 check. And come in like this, maybe? So rook b6 is more accurate. Yeah, this is the idea. King h1, rook g3, and we're in trouble. Whereas taking here like this, if the queen retreats, then he's just getting hunted down with these sorts of ideas and we can just win the queen <sighs> i played that too quick okay well one more life that was kind of stupid of me that's annoying i've just two of those puzzles were very avoidable like getting them wrong one of them i just mouse slipped and then this one i just didn't think long enough um i think rook g6 he's threatening mate our queen can't deliver any checks. Rook g6 
attacks the queen and x-rays the rook. So if the queen moves, we just take the rook. If rook g6 and the queen gives a check on c8, rook f8 attacks the queen. The queen can't give a check on e6 because we take it. That must be winning. Just take. And then take the queen. Cool. How was that a 2400 puzzle, by the way? I don't know. Okay, so... Wait, what was the previous move? I assume we take the rook. How has he stopped me from promoting? I mean, if we save the bishop, then he can. Maybe. And with these kinds of moves. But what if we just move the king? Well, then this comes with check, actually. Here, check. If we go here, then he has king to f2. What about bishop d3? Taking away the c2 square. And his king still can't access f2 in time. Bishop d3 looks good because he has no... He doesn't have this. If he plays a move like g3 to give himself the g2 square though. Here, here. I think bishop e4 should be winning. Taking away both of these squares. No? What? No, I don't care about my chess achievements. I want to know why that was wrong. Why was that wrong? I know I did that quickly, but I thought that made sense. So we needed to go here first. Because if we go here, he can push. But what's the difference? We go here first. Oh, we can't go knight c4 check. And this doesn't work because uh, our bishop supports it. And if knight g2, then we have bishop e4. Oh, that's frustrating. And then this doesn't work because we take it. Ah, oh, two silly mistakes. One mouse slip. Hey, I'm sure we can beat 44 if we go again at some point. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, then please, you know, let me know if you like this kind of video. Uh, if you would prefer just the normal, you know, rapid game type thing, then... You know again just tell me i'm more than happy to take constructive criticism because at the end of the day this channel is meant to educate my viewers not for you know just me to do whatever i want i want to try and educate you uh so yeah annoying to lose the way we did but hey that's puzzle rush and i don't do puzzles that often so it's kind of expected anyway end of the video thank you very much for watching see you in the next one